All right, guys, so I have an interview here I did with Ray. Uh, he was in the Amish for 46 years. Um, he has a really kind of a heartbreaking story with his kids and uh, what happened when they left. We were at a conference in Ohio when I filmed it. I think he's been there for four years. I've been there three years. It's called the Step Out of the Boat Conference. And it's a conference that people who have come out of legalistic groups, um, but really, to be honest, it's, a, it's about what Jesus has done in people's lives. So whether whatever their past is before Christ and then what Jesus has done to change their lives by living in them. And so, um, you know, it's maybe addiction of some sort or a legalistic group or um, anything like that. And people just come and share their stories. And it's just an amazing few days to, to get together and have fellowship and, and worship. Anyways, so we were there and I asked Ray if he'd share his story. And so here it is. Good morning. Well, it's not morning when they watch us. So uh, this is Ray. I met Ray like two years ago, I think. And it would have been right after, I guess you got kicked out, right? So it wasn't, you didn't really leave by choice necessarily. Yeah. Um, but Ray was Amish and um, he has an amazing story. And so we're at Step Out of the Boat Conference and I just grabbed him for a little bit to, to share his story with us and see what God has done in his life. So yeah, I just go ahead and share what you, you don't have to say, share your whole story. It's really long, yeah. I'm sure, but um, just go ahead and share a little bit about that process of um, growing up Amish and then up until you left. Yeah, so I was Amish for 46 years. We had nine children. Um, six of them were married when this happened. And at the time we were, you know, I was one of the elders in church and and I came to realize, I was like really wondering in my heart if, if this is actually what, what we're being taught in, in, in church is actually true. And I just really wondered, I started having my doubts and... When, what, what, like what age would have you been? 46. So that's when you started to question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking I was 46 or 47, but yeah. So then I just started out, well, I'm going to... It wasn't even a search for Jesus or anything like that. It was just, uh, uh, just wondering if they were actually telling us the truth, the ministers. So I decided I was going to look for myself, and I started digging into the Bible. And, and as I was read, I was going to go all through the whole Testament, the New Testament, to see what it says. And when I did, about halfway through, I became saved. It wasn't my intentions because I was always, we were always taught that you can't know until after you die. Mm -hmm. And 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 then I just changed. And, and I didn't tell anybody right away, but my wife, look, looking back now, my wife said she, she, she noticed a change in me. And so you didn't even tell her? No, not, not right to start with. Yeah. And I just kept reading my Bible. I'd get up at three o'clock in the morning and and I'd be so excited to start studying that I would just, uh, I would just, just devour the scriptures, and and everybody noticed the change in me. And then one one night I did finally say something to my wife Martha, and and she just started crying and said, "Well, she just can't believe that, you know, the word is going to come out that her husband has this different belief." Mm -hmm. And so I knew I kind of had to drop it at that point. So I just dropped it and didn't say anything much. Didn't really bring it up again. Uh, but I could, you could kind of feel the tension sometimes. Yeah. And later she told me that you know I would I would I had a crew working and I didn't have to go to work every day physically. So a lot of times, but I did you know had to put out the fires and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. so I, I would like leave for a couple hours during the day always to go to the job site or whatever. And I found out later that she would always go in my office and like look at my Bible because I was like <laughs> highlighting and stuff like that yeah. and she would like get mad. Check out know, and see yeah. what you were doing. So she, but anyways, eight months later, uh, but there, we had, we, we, we didn't really fight. We didn't have anything. It wasn't anything like that really because we had a good marriage, but it was like, uh, she would like, 
you can feel the tension, mm -hmm. so to speak. You, in your testimony, you had shared about when you first got your Bible and you put it in your gun safe. Do you remember that? Yeah, but that would, this was is- Was that later? Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, I'm jumping yeah, ahead. Yeah, this was later. So anyway, see, because I, I had to, I had, I kept my Bible in mind. We had Bibles in the house. Okay. Laying around, but yeah. I knew you automatically knew that no one just like digs into their Bible when you're Amish, and so I would I would spend a lot of hours in my office, so I would just have my Bible in the office. When I got out for the day, left for the day, I would like just put it in the top drawer, and close okay. the drawer. Well, she sure. would go in there and look at. Okay. It, you know. Okay. But so we had a little bit of tension there. We didn't fight or anything, but you could just feel it, you know. And then one morning. Eight months, this was eight months later after I got saved. Okay. She, uh, one morning, she was just, she was telling me, we were talking one morning and she was telling me how our daughter, something that happened in her district, and she, I said, see, that's just not right. It's not something that their bishop did. And she just like, like, just start, and I was like, I was like, whoa, you know, I her reaction didn't mm -hmm. didn't warrant yeah. because uh, you know not any more than I said. Sure. And then finally, I was like, you know, she says, "Oh, you think you know everything?" I said, "No, I don't know everything, but I know what the Bible says about that." And so, I wasn't going to argue. I just get my coffee. And I just turned and go walking away. I was like, "All I'm going to tell you, it's not of works." Mm -hmm. And I went back in my uh, back in my office. I got my Bible. And I opened up to Ephesians two. Mm -hmm. I was going to show her to Ephesians mm -hmm. 2, 8, and 9. Yeah. I slid across the table and I says, I was like, read chapter 2. I slid, I just went out, I just, Bible slid on the table. I said, read Ephesians uh, chapter 2. I had it open to it and everything. I turned around and started walking back, uh, back to my office. The day went on like normal, whatever. And later that evening, after dinner, she says, so what do you believe? She asked me. So I just believe exactly what the Bible says. That's all I do is just believe exactly what the Bible mm -hmm. says. I can show you, you know, the Bible tells us what to believe. Mm -hmm. I don't believe anything above and beyond what the Bible says. And she's like, well, so how long have you known? And I knew instantly that she knew. And I just got up, I just hugged and laughed and cried because I was the only one in the house or my community that was, was saved. Yeah. I, I had no one to speak to. Yeah. You know, I would be on the phone with my brother or my uncle and that that, that knew about salvation and stuff like that. But yeah, so it was a glorious thing because it, it, was, it was like me getting saved again because yeah. I could finally express it with someone. Yeah. And it was just a wonderful thing. We would just sit and talk and talk and talk. To this day, she always accuses me of that she never had the chance to grow. You know, most young Christians are like start off on milk mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they progress. She always has accused me of she never had the chance to stay on milk. She was fed steaks yeah, right away. Right away. Because <laughs> <laughs> I would be telling her stuff, you know, about this and this. And she would just like be in awe. Yeah. To start with, and she would be like, "That's enough for now. That's enough yeah. for now." Yeah. She said uh, she was just uh, she was just because before this. She would always think in her mind, it didn't matter what I said, she would always think, a lot of times she didn't express it to me, but she would always think that I'm going to find out for myself. I'm not mm -hmm. going to take his word for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then when, when she got saved, she says all of a sudden it was just like, I knew everything, he, every word he said was, was true. Yeah. Yeah. So time goes on and our daughter was getting ready to be married a few months, so we couldn't, we decided we're not gonna bring it out to our children because it goes against our religion to think this way. Mm -hmm. And so we kept this quiet. And then the daughter got married on a Thursday and a the following Monday, our six older children that are married came home. We still had three minors living with us at the time. Our uh, old, old daughter, our six married older children came that night and confronted us. Said, what are you guys doing to us? What are you talking about? So they wanted us to come out and talk on the patio. So we come out and talked and 
everything just just blew up. I mean, it just like so your whole family the, was there. Yeah. Okay. Well, except the the young ones. They actually they actually took the three young my my old uh, the the oldest one that was still at home was like sixteen years old. Okay. And he was working. But he was working with my other sons. They had told him, without us knowing, that he's supposed to come off at my daughter's house that night, not not to go home. Okay. And then they, when they showed up, he pulled in with the taxi driver, and my oldest son comes in, opens the door, and he told my two youngest, "You're supposed to go down to Susie's house, which was my daughter." And they said, and and Martha's like, my wife's like, "No, they they can't." Yeah. And and my oldest son's like go you know well they were so used to being around we were a close family i mean mm -hmm. we always were together we never so they trusted your other son yeah yeah, yeah. so so they just took off I mean, I mean before i was even out of my office and could stop them they were already out the door and then they confronted us about it and everything just blew up and they promised me i mean my 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 sons come up to me so dad i promise you you will never see your children again you know and stuff like that and and, and then the minister showed up, and and this is all be, this is all because you read the Bible, and you were saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like go out and preach to people or anything. Yeah, I, I just, I kept it under. Yeah, I, I just, but they just could, keep they it. could tell something yeah, was different. Yeah, but they instantly knew that there yeah. was something different with me, yeah. with with us, and so it just blew up, and and then we had we were. Begged the bishop to let the children come home. I said, and he says, well, they don't agree with what you, with, with the way you guys believe. I said, it doesn't matter if they agree or not. They're, they're supposed to come home and and with their mom, with, with their mom and dad, you yeah. know, with their parents. And how old, if you don't mind, how old were the youngest three then? So you, fourteen. It was uh, sixteen. I think fourteen and twelve. Okay, sixteen, fourteen, and twelve. And well, anyways, then we we it's a long story. There are many many things happened there. Um, they just awakened us, and you know, my son like grabbed a hold of my shirt and just was just just ripped my shirt all the way down. And and the ministers were standing right there, and they didn't even stop it or anything. They just they just stood there and watched. And we ended up getting the sheriffs get the law to bring the children back. And they came back. They were just so distraught. In the meantime, my wife went down and was trying to get them away because she knew they were brainwashing them. Mm -hmm. And she would go down there. My oldest son was standing right in front of the other two young ones right behind him, and he was gonna hit her. He's like, he was like, <laughs> just like this, and he was so mad because they had him so fired up, mm -hmm. you know, against us already brainwashed, and and so she had to come back home without him. And then we that's why we had to call the sheriffs to get him. And then we 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 uh, we have the the sheriffs brought them back, and they were warned that they can't that, that they have to stay there with us or whatever. But the, all three of them, they have they each have a bedroom upstairs. Okay. And but they all three went into one room and they pushed furniture up against the door because my oldest son had warned them and told them mm -hmm. that that you're evil and that yeah that that we're evil and that we're going to break the door down and and. Uh, and, and deceive them. Yeah. Well, you can't deceive someone by force. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, it, <laughs> That's it just very true. it just it just got it just got really wicked and bad, and it, it was like that for days. I mean, screaming and yelling at us and cussing us out and stuff, and and just it, it's a long story. There's a lot of information in there that happened during that time, but mm -hmm. ended up being that ended up being that the no one ever came to visit us again none of our children or anything and the younger children that were the minors that were with us were wanting to go live with them they always kept asking us to we'd said no mm -hmm. well then finally we just seen that this is not working you know it went i don't know eight months i think after that that they were with us and we tried just love them you know i would like suggest them to go mow the grass and if they didn't go i'd just go do it i wouldn't mm -hmm. bug them about it or anything i wouldn't we demanded nothing of them. We were trying to win them, win them back with love, mm -hmm. but it just didn't work. Uh, you know, sometimes we thought we were making headways, but then, then 
every once in a while something happened that just showed us that we're not really making any headways. Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 well, the, well, the problem, one of the biggest problem was that they continued to go down to visit their older siblings. Because well, so they, they just got, lived right down the street. They yeah. could walk down there, you know. And, you know, it, there's a lot of, it, it, it's, it, if we could have separated that, mm -hmm. we might have had more of a chance. But it got to the point where my wife was like, always consciously, she was like, okay, our oldest son's upstairs in his room. Sarah May, our daughter, is outside. And, and Adam, our youngest, is here. She always kind of like subcon. She was always keeping track of where mm -hmm. the children were at mm -hmm. in her mind, stuff like that. So she was. But there was so much tension. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't eat together for for dinner or nothing. They just wouldn't eat with us, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, it was very, very spiritual. Very, very. You could just feel the tension. You could cut the tension with a knife. Yeah. And finally, I was like, you know, I can't live like this. Yeah. I cannot live like this. And then, and I was still Amish. I was just as Amish as I was always been. I didn't change anything. I didn't even have a car. I didn't have nothing. But I, I, uh, the only thing that would happen after this, the first night was, we just never went back to the church. Mm -hmm. we, we just quit, quit attending church. But there, nothing else has changed, so, but our children didn't come home and visit us or try to talk to us or nothing. Ministers, nobody. Nobody came to talk to us, and then it was a it, it was just a horrible, horrible experience. And then the one night, the one day, they said, "Well, I'm going to go buy a truck." So I bought a truck and brought the truck home. Did you buy it in your Amish clothes? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And went and bought a truck and drove it home. And, and Sarah May was the only one at home when I brought it home. My wife was just like Sarah May, like, "Whose truck is that?" You know, this and that. And she starts. Well, I'm not going to drive with him, stuff like that. Well, she ran to the phone and called my oldest son that was still living at home and at work. And it, it just, they all took off down to my daughter's house, the three youngest. And they came home. They came home. And I think, I think me, and my, me and my wife went, went somewhere that night, but they came home. And when they, they came home, it was like 10.30 at night. Me and my wife were already in bed. And yeah. they, we had strict rules. They had to be home at a certain time, <clears throat> especially during this time. Mm -hmm. We always said, you know, if they go down to visit their sisters or whatever, but they have to be home by 8.30 or whatever sure. it was. Well, they didn't come home that night until like 10 o'clock, 10.30. And, and we just knew there was, there was something big brewing again. And our three children come home and, and we were already in bed and they called us out of bedroom. And they just let us have it. I mean, you just just yelled and screamed at us for, you know, buying a truck, and that's not. So that was the day you did. bought it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was bad. I mean, it was it was. It, they were they were our, our children never even disrespected us ever or anything mm -hmm. like that. They just changed like that. They were they actually started even cussing at us, and finally, my wife's like. You, you you couldn't there were all three of them there were standing there just just it was it was straight devil is what it was mm -hmm. i mean straight satan he was just like it was just like it, it wasn't it wasn't our children mm -hmm. and so finally martha's like well i'm just gonna go pray they said well you might as well you pray to, uh, to the devil anyways you know and well it was that was the breaking point it was so so bad it's like you know i just know this is not going to work no more i i just there, there's just no way i'm going to be able to go through life with having that much mm -hmm. tension in my own home. It was like, you were like tiptoeing through your own house. You were like, cause you, you always, you could just feel the pressure. So then we finally gave him the choice to, we prayed about it and went and talked to some people and uh, just, just really struggled through it. We, we cried, we, we didn't sleep for quite a few nights. And then finally we, we made a decision to it's just kind of hard to, to tell your wife she has to give up her children. You know? Yeah, I can't even. I can't even imagine. You know, and, and I and I really respected that, and I was really careful. You know, to how, what I said or whatever. I just knew automatically it wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. But I, she wasn't as much of a, as long as a believer as I was, as mature. Mm -hmm. And I figured that she's going to have a harder time seeing it as I see it. But we talked about it. We we went and talked to the sheriff's office what we could do, our options, and mm -hmm. we did all that stuff and and came home that one day 
and we I told her the two boys were down to my daughter's house and my the Sarah May, the middle girl, she was of the three youngest. She was there and I finally told her, I says, she was gonna go down also to my daughter's house. And I says, hey, come here. Came back in, I told her, I says, look, if you if you guys still wanna still wanna move in with the older ones, I'm gonna leave the choice up to you. You you can if you wanna go, you 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 can. She's okay. And then she left and a couple hours later, they came all, all three of them came back home and they just took all their stuff and just threw, was throwing them in garbage bags and stuff and took it outside, out the house. And then our house was empty. We sat down and we just cried. We just, we just cried for a couple hours. Finally, some of our uh, friends came over and spent the rest of the evening with us and then we were just by ourselves there for a while, and, and then we were there over Christmas. Nobody invited us, nobody acknowledged us even. No Christmas cards, no invitations, nothing. Not from our children or from our families or anybody. And so we just decided we we're gonna leave. And we just left. And we just left the Amish then, and Burned our Amish clothes. Just felt the best way is to get rid of their idols because they had. A lot of people won't won't say this when you when, if you ask an Amish directly, but their clothes are is an idol to them. Mm -hmm. Where in my community, anyways. Mm -hmm. um, What's well, their identity? It's yeah yeah yeah. yeah it's just yeah. their identity. But so then we we sold a, our home and then we rented a house and. And we were like so scared at one time, I forgot to tell you about when I locked the stuff mm -hmm. up. You know, when our children confronted us, it was, it got, it was that bad and that violent that, that we never locked our doors or windows or anything. And it got so bad that so we were like, we were like, there's no way that, we're, that we can trust them. Mm -hmm. And we locked our doors. I, they were blaming it all my, you know, because I had other extra biblical books besides, you know, okay. books like about the Bible. And stuff. And yeah, stuff. commentary and yeah. stuff like that. I took all that stuff, I took all my guns out of my gun safe and put all my books and my Bibles and everything in there and locked them up because I knew they were, I, I, I was almost positive they were going to try to break in and get all that stuff and, mm -hmm. and get rid of it because they were going to try to fix me, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, so then when we, and I was scared for Martha because they, they actually thought that we were, we, we were mental, like, like mm -hmm. they had to take us to some mental institute or something, get mm -hmm. us some help. And I, and I did not want to leave Martha alone because I just figured, well, my sons are going to show up and are just going to take her one day without me knowing, you know, without yeah. me knowing. And yeah. They're just going to take her somewhere by yeah. force. And so we were very careful. I mean, it was at that point where, where before we moved out, we, if I would take a nap in the afternoon, she would stay and watch, like watch out the windows and make sure that there's nobody coming wow. or whatever. And then we would switch wow. off. Yeah. But so then we ended up moving out selling that house just to get out from the area we found a place to rent and i actually got 80 hired adt to come out and install a security system just because yeah i didn't know i i, I how far it, away did you move from your community uh the first move we did was about 20 miles okay so still pretty close yeah but yeah yeah so we lived there for a while and then we bought another house year before last we bought a house and another 20 miles further north and up by Lake Erie. And then we, we it was a, a well-built house, but it was never, just never finished. Mm. So I just wanted to spend a lot of time with Martha. You know, I just, I, I didn't, I work. I mean, they, they, the night this all happened, my sons, my son-in-law were working for me. They all quit on me. I still had contracts to fulfill. So I mm -hmm. struggled through that, got yeah. that done. But then I just basically took a year off and then we just bought this house and had missing cabinets and there's a bunch of stuff that there's just no no one ever completed so we just i just stayed home and we just worked on and got the house all mm -hmm. put back together so we lived there for a while then in the meantime november a year ago our youngest son adam calls us one morning and tells us that 
come pick me up. I'm going to come live with you. It's like, Gloria, whoo, great news, you know. And so when we were there picking him up, he had all his stuff packed. He was ready to go. We were picking him up. My wife says, Geez, I'm going to go in and talk to my daughter, you know, Susan. So she went up to the door, and she was going to go inside, and they locked the door on her. They wouldn't let her in. And so your were, son was outside? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was outside with, with, yeah. with his stuff ready to go, but but she wanted to go and talk to them. Yeah, and and they wouldn't, and they wouldn't. They 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 had locked the door, and her grandson comes up, run with a big smile on his face against the door. The door was just Mark. She wasn't going to make a big fuss, so she just turned around and walked away. And all three of our other girls were there too. So yeah, and it's been life just as went on. It was a, you know, and Adam's doing great. He's doing really good. He's transitioning very well. He's very happy. He was always like a really depressed before. That's kind of why he came back to us because okay. he was so depressed. And I guess everybody tried to talk to him, my brother-in-law, and yeah. everybody tried to talk to him and, and stuff like that. And they even threatened him with hell if he came to live with us. But wow. and he really had a hard time. He, he wanted to come way sooner than he did. Because, but he didn't because they they were always mm -hmm. it, it was it was the it control. was it, it was that fear that they put in him. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they. Now he's he's doing great and we're doing fine and, and we've even sold that house now and I'm part of a fellowship. And we were going to this one fellowship, but a friend of mine that I met here at this conference last year, um, I met him and then. I knew of an honor, another Amish family that had 10 children that also left the Amish. They were out there by themselves in New York, there, right across the Pennsylvania line there, okay. and close to Lake Erie. And so I got them connected, and he's pastoring them now, because okay. they, they had no one. They yeah. had no one to fellowship with or whatever. But now, and he's been bugging me ever since to come help him with them. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're doing now. Uh, we we we're uh, I, we go up there drive an hour and a half where we're living at right now, mm -hmm. but we we are in the process of buying a house that's like within a half hour from from the fellowship. So awesome! We'll be moving on further there and wow. And we started a small mailing ministry back to our people, the Amish, uh, where Martha has puts together these memes and. It's more picture type, so they kind of, you know, because our people can, they only have eighth grade educations, and, and they're not dumb people, but mm -hmm. but some people can relate better with pictures. Yeah, and, and, sure. and they've never been taught that. They've ever, never been taught the Word of God, because the only Word of God they ever hear is in German, which mm -hmm. no one understands. Yeah. Yeah, so for, for people who aren't Amish, your first language is Pennsylvania Dutch, right? Yeah. And then your Bible, your second language would be English. Yeah. And then your third language would be German. Yeah. And your Bible's in German. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Most of them. I mean, there's a lot of them that, that do have English Bible. We, we had English Bible, yeah. but no one ever read them. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no Bible study or, or mm -hmm. there's anything like that. You know, there, there's no, there's no guide. There's, there's, there's no one there that can maybe teach the basic fundamentals mm -hmm. of how to study the Bible. Or, or, yeah. And they or don't want to. Like that. I mean, and that's you not, have no interest because... Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing there. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a crazy story. I I think and pray for you guys often because I can't even imagine to not have to have your kids taken away like that. I just can't even fathom that. Yeah, and then we have a bunch of grandchildren that I think the last three or four grandchildren we haven't even seen. We have twelve grandchildren. Well, um, we have no idea what they're telling them, but we haven't seen them since. We have no contact with them at all. Mm -hmm. Our oldest daughter. Karen, she sends us Christmas cards and birthday cards, but she's the only one. Yeah. She's the only one. Wow. And all of that because of the true gospel. Yeah. But it's, I mean, ultimately... When you, when you make that book your final authority, you're going to have... Yeah. There's going to be divisions. Yep. And, oh, yeah. yeah. So I've been having some issues with uh, the camera maybe you can tell in the last several interviews, but it shuts off and I don't catch it. But anyways, um, 
he had just mentioned kind of there towards the end, um, I just missed the last couple minutes of it, but he had mentioned of how everything that he's gone through, um, not that it's not painful and hard and difficult, but everything he's gone through is worth it because of Christ. It's just been great to, uh, to watch him grow over the last few years. Um, anyways, um, I'm gonna put a link to their website in the description here. Um, they, like you mentioned, they have a little ministry that they do to the Amish and they make these little um, tracks or little uh, images and, and newsletters and send them out. So I'll put a link there if you wanna support them. I'm sure they would very much appreciate that. We'll see you guys next time.